In this town, we don't care who wins the election. We're rich. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Raphael and I'm reviewing episode five of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And we start out with a foreshadowing of Erica Jane on her way to Sutan's party later on, three days later. And of course, the sad music and the dramatic looks outside of music video, like, yes, I didn't expect it to be this way. I just didn't know I was gonna be caught. And then she looks into the camera. And then they show a little snippet of her next week saying, yes, I was gonna hold this man's hand till death, which was probably four days after they finished filming that. And then we rewind it three days earlier and then we're at Kyle's house and she's having a patriotic party, which is giving me very much Purge movie vibes. A, a what kind of party? I was just waiting for her to bring out those creepy masks that they wear in the purge movies. Like, here you go. We're gonna go purging tonight after the election results. So everybody make sure you wear one and you have your Chanel blade with you because we're gonna go do damage around town. And then she wanted the woman to come dress for the occasion patriotically. And then we cut over to Doria and her husband and she's getting ready in her closet and she is not matching what Kyle asked of them to wear. She's wearing this green version of the infamous yellow plaid look from Clueless with a brooch that said vote in her hair. This is cute, I suppose, and PK's just watching her. And I do wonder, do y'all think that PK or more so Dorit actually loves him? Like when I see them together, I just think, hmm, you two are coming next. I just feel like their marriage will eventually fall. Something just tells me. And I wonder if PK ever gets annoyed at how high maintenance door it seems he's just there looking at her in pajamas and she's all glammed up and he's not even bothering to come because he probably you know voted for that clown and he can't show his true colors on tv then dora is explaining to pk oh we had a little issue her and kyle on the jet back to la and i was wondering where's that footage we want to see that like what happened in the plane i wanted to see what that footage was about like what exactly caused the issue between y'all or what were y'all talking about exactly that led up to kyle crying these white woman tears one by one all the women start arriving at kyle's purge party and crystal was first and then kathy arrived and then Sutan arrived looking like a dirty comic book. Uh, this was not the dress code, Sutan. What are you wearing? For somebody who claims she's fashion and couture, she looks like a damn bubblegum rapper. What's crazy about this whole election purge party is that they're that privileged that while the rest of America is shaking and quaking in their boots of, oh my God, what's gonna happen with this country? Like, so many lives are gonna be affected, which whatever choices made, one more than other but here they are oh let's just have drinks and food with little flags on it it doesn't matter who wins or loses we're all winners right let's toast to the poor Ding! it's really cringy and weird if you look at it much closer than what it is at what they're really celebrating and i was wondering where garcelle was in this whole situation she probably knew that they were gonna go purging right after the party and was like i'm staying my ass at home i am not fucking with these hoes like they are crazy and i don't know what they're gonna be up to tonight if their certain candidate don't win and all all through the night and all through the episode they kept showing each person has this amount of votes this person has this amount of votes and they're all pretending oh my god i'm so scared do you think we're gonna have a winner tonight oh my god my life is gonna be so affected by this do y'all think that they all voted for that clown or do y'all think that they're just putting on for the camera we're gonna have the first woman vice president isn't that so fucking cool that's so cool right Right, Sutan, agree with me. We're on camera. We need to look right for the public. <laughs> We're not Republicans, right? <laughs> it was just all very cringy and suspicious. I was looking at them with a magnifying glass. I'm like, mm-hmm. As if it was really gonna affect anybody's life. And then they all go outside and they're watching the results there as well. And Sutan's pretending, oh my God, this is just so anticlimactic. Like, this is just so nerve wracking. Shut up. Crystal reveals to us that she lost five pounds and all the women are cheering which was also another cringy moment i'm like y'all are so tone deaf like y'all didn't even let this woman speak of what caused that and then when she actually said like oh yeah i had an eating disorder and she was bulimic and then sometimes like i had nothing to do with that that had nothing to do with me i did not cause anybody any stress and of course, Lisa makes it about herself. Crystal, I understand exactly what you're going through. I remember when Amelia gave me my storyline and made it about her weight issues. And it's just such a hard issue. I know what you mean. Yes. No, no, no. I, I care about it too, but I wanted a storyline. So I wanted to exploit that. Yeah, but I completely understand what you're going through. It's horrible. So that was a nice layer that we got to chop off from Crystal. And maybe that's why she reacted to Sutan walking in on her naked. Maybe that's why she just didn't like it. You know, there's an underlying 
things that she's dealing with that other people don't know. So here she is giving us a little more of her. And then everybody goes back inside and they start eating and drinking again and again fake worrying about the election results. And then we have Mr. Lion King himself, AKA Crystal's husband. Uh, yeah, it's only gonna be four more years if that clown wins. What? He just said it so casually as if, yeah, it's not gonna affect me either way. I'm not watching Lion King anymore. Mufasa could kiss my ass. I knew that Scar from the Lion King was a Republican and now we see who made it that way. And then we have Kyle and this weird relationship with Dora. She's talking to her as if they're exes or something. And she's just explaining to her in the room quietly and alone like, baby, why are you not talking to me no more? You don't, you don't make love to me like you used to, Dora. Why? Why are you stop talking to me like that? And you mistreated me in front of all our friends on the plane and I'm not gonna lie, baby, that was embarrassing. I bought you that Birkin bag the other night and you, this is how you repay me? It's just, I want you to treat me better. And Dora's not having it. She's just like, look, it is what it is. We could get over it. We could play bump bump in the night every now and then together. But from now on, Kyle, we are not in a relationship. This is more like a one night stand type of thing, okay? Like I'm done with your shit. Like you want me to wear a tacky ass red, white, and blue to your party? Bitch, I'm wearing green and my little vote thing and I'm leaving, okay? That's it. And Kyle is just not understanding why Dora is just being so complicated about this and why she's not leaving PK for her and getting a relationship with her. But you know, eventually Dora ends up saying, look, I'm gonna have to go see my dad. I'm leaving. I only came here to show y'all my outfit for five seconds and I wanted it to be on the season. But now me and PK are leaving. Uh, Babe, you're done with that burger? Hurry the fuck up. That shit's uncooked anyway. Let's go. Let's go. We're leaving now. PK scolding her in the car saying, oh, now they're gonna think that we're rude. Like, I can't believe this. I am not letting you wear Louis Vuitton for three days in a row after this. This is embarrassing. And then we finally see Garcelle show up and Sutan has shut down the whole car dealer place so both of them could shop around privately. And Sutan loves throwing this whole couture this, couture that. We're talking about cars. I mean, I'm... So I don't know much about Kara, but I didn't know Kara could be Katora. She talks a big game about Katora this and Katora that for a woman who has two kitties on her titties in her confessional. And eventually Sutan chooses a car and her and Garcelle go right around in it. It was a kind of a cute scene to be honest. Sutan, if she were just to calm the fuck down and hadn't shown that Karen side to her, maybe she would be a little bit more likable, but I still don't like you. But cute car though, I like the car. So then we move over to Crystal and Mr. Lion King's house and their relationship is a very interesting one. It's almost as if, does he even know who she is? She's telling him all of this information and confessing all these issues that he, she had throughout her life in front of him. And he's just like, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, you wanted to be a white woman. Oh, oh okay, uh, wow. It's almost as if she never told him any of this and this is the first time or maybe they're just playing it up for the cameras. And Chris was just being very raw this episode, confessing, saying she wanted to be a white woman, she wanted to be blue-eyed and be white and well, you kind of got your wish because you're in a group full of white women. She's just telling her husband that she's nervous saying little words like that or having any conversations like this with her daughter because she doesn't want her daughter to pick up on this and follow in her footsteps with saying, oh, mommy, your legs are skinny. So she tries to kind of turn that conversation into something else. So it doesn't seem like it's all about body weight or anything like that that could affect her daughter in the future, which is good because kids will pick up things like that and it will stay on their brains. People think that kids are dumb. But they're really not. They will pick up on everything and they will stick with them. And then later on, it turns into an issue later on in life. But I did like seeing Crystal's much more vulnerable side to her and revealing much more of who she is to us. And hopefully we get more of that this season with her. And then we move over to Sutan's story. And did y'all see how much of a wooden wall she put on her store all around the windows and the glass doors? Who wants to rob your raggedy ass store, Sutan? Nobody. Kyle and Kathy come. And Kathy's very calm this episode. She's so mellow and relaxed and not really out there. She wasn't really in the camera too much. Sutan got her SpongeBob SquarePants shorts on and she's explaining to Kyle she doesn't know if Erica's gonna be there. And all throughout the episode, everybody's just wondering, oh, is Erica alive? Is Erica okay? What's going on here? Like her marriage seemed fine just a year ago. And Sutan texts Erica if she's coming to her Parisian party. Erica actually replies and says, yes, I'm gonna be there. So that's gonna be her grand entrance into the next week's episode. I kind of want to see Sutan in a dating environment. I want to see how she is with other men and on dates. I kind of want to see 
her have her own Teresa Judice moment, if anything. I kind of want to see how she plays that out with other men and how other men support her behavior. And then we get a short scene with Lisa and her husband and their dynamic is pretty cute. I kind of like it that he's very calm and quiet and to himself and she's the complete opposite. She's more like wild, fun and exciting and very out there and have a big ass mouth. And they're just gardening and doing housework outside. And she also tells us that she gives a good blowy and that she knows how to handle his hose correctly. And then they talk about how he doesn't want to go through the divorce again. And she's like, yes, I don't want to go through that either. I don't want to experience that. And then they pinky promise on it. I mean, I guess a pinky promise is what stops you from getting a divorce, right? <laughs> then we get the bride of Chucky and she's putting her final touches on her Persian party. And she's trying to give this vibe of, oh, fashion week and Paris and couture. And I'm not sure why she was invited in the first place, especially with those pube shoes she's been showing the past two episodes. She would get no invite from me with a quickness. And Kyle's over at Crystal's house and she's so mesmerized by that purse that was on the table that was worth $95,000. That is insane. For such a plain purse, it's worth that much money? I'm not understanding how somebody just buys that. It's not even cute. Would y'all buy that? Do y'all think that it's worth $95? It literally looks like any plain purse that I would see at any regular store. And Doris also getting ready for the party and even though she does look nice most of the time, she always somewhat borderline tacky with the logos and the Louis Vuitton symbols all over her outfit in some scenes. It's like she's a walk-in advertisement and I'm not sure if I like it or not. I mean, she pulls it off, I suppose, but it's literally just logo, 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 logo 24 seven all over her body, but that's what she likes. Everybody starts getting to Sutan's house and Kyle is the annoying type of landlord that's always reminding you, I own you, I own this property. Oh yeah, I'm gonna come visit next week. I need to check this to see if it's still in good condition. Let Sutan live in the house peacefully. She's paying you to live there, so let it go. Every five seconds, she's always bringing up, yes, this used to be my house. I used to have these type of parties here. Oh my God, it's so crazy seeing the decorations that Sutan has put in up okay, let her decorate the whole house as tacky as she wants. And it was funny how Lisa and Kyle both showed up in the same exact dress, like the same exact dress, not similar, but it was the same exact dress. Do y'all think it was planned? And who do y'all think wore it better? I think uh, if I had to give it to somebody, it will probably be Kyle, even though she looked like Mary Poppins in it but she styled it just a little bit better with the hat maybe. Kathy also shows up and Garcelle also shows up. I'm assuming that this scene was filmed the morning of when America found out their new president and vice president because Garcelle starts cheering on and Biden, here is, and everybody kind of fake starts cheering along too saying, I'm so happy that we have a female vice president and I told my daughters about it. And Sutan is trying her hardest to try to blend in with the celebrations. Yeah, <laughs> Biden and Harris, <laughs> I voted for him, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, woman vice president, yes. <laughs> uh. It was just so awkward to watch because you know some of them are full of shit. And they all sit down and they're all discussing Erica, who's also on the way. And Garcelle brings up a good point saying, uh, why did she divorce him now? Why is she filing now? I mean, he really only had up to season 12 anyway, and then he was probably gonna, you know, go. And they're all just giving their opinion on what they've seen with Erica and her husband and how it just seemed like everything was okay five seconds ago. Even at the Lake Tahoe trip, Garcelle says, yeah, we were talking about it. And she was bringing him up on the boat and saying, yeah, he's at work, you know, nothing crazy. And then as they're talking, Erica finally gets there. She's walking to the door, all dramatic, the full on stunt. And she opens the door and then she closes the door dramatic and everybody looks and then it's to be continued. Yeah, I love pulling these stunts. Another to be continued episode. I thought this episode we were gonna get to the meat and potatoes of the conversation. So I'm assuming that next week is when she tells Sutan or what, or what at her own party. I think so. If I'm not mistaken, this is probably the scene that happens next week. And what do y'all think is gonna happen next week with Erica? I just know that they're gonna edit this to make it look in her favor saying she had no idea what was going on. This then the third. Did y'all see the Housewife and the Hustler documentary series thing? I have not seen it yet, but I heard that there are some scandalous things on there and then there's an audio floating around something with her lawyers. Yeah, it's not looking right for you, Erica. So I don't know what they're about to reveal later on this season or even next episode, but 
It seems like you're in big trouble, Erica, and I don't know if this edit could save you. With that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Bye, y'all.